Uh, one of my goals in life that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to actually complete is to finish reading the entire way through uh, a book called Finnegan's Wake. It's written by James Joyce. James Joyce is the author of, I think he's most famous for the book Ulysses. And uh, his writing style is the, uh, what's that called? stream of consciousness style where it doesn't really describe to you what's happening it just shows you exactly what a person's thoughts are in every moment of every day just focusing on like one day or one afternoon and just having like just going through every single thought that goes through his head there's a little bit of dialogue but the dialogue isn't lined up like it's not set up like dialogue it's just set up as in the whole thing is just a stream of consciousness or whatever but anyways uh, i was interested in finishing his book uh, Finnegan's Wake. And the reason why I'm kind of interested in finishing it or, or reading the whole thing is because it is, according to Wikipedia and according to a bunch of other sources, it is the most difficult to read book of the English language. And um, in order for you to understand why that is, maybe I should read like a few pages or like a, a few paragraphs from it. So hold on, let me just open up to a random page here. All right, here we go. Just one moment. A pinch in time of the ideal. Musketeers, Alphos, Burkos, and Karamis. Leave the Australia for the Astrologeries and for the love of Sances and the honor of Cavan's Pike. Putty, putty whack back to Pamental and roll away the real world. The real world, the real world. And call all your smoke blushes snow white and rosard if you will have the real cream. Now for the strawberry frolic, fillins, falouche, cherons, la flamme, flamme, femme, femme. Come on, ordinary man with that large, big, non bully head and that blanco, bare-backed, fischl, ex Mac maskinski, skapolos, duzansky or other. Your mackler's mutton legs going muscle-bound from being too pulled. Noah Berry weighed stone thousand one when Hazel was a hen. Now her fat's filling fast, therefore chat bags, why not yours? There are twenty nine sweet reasons why blossom time's the best. Elders fall for the green almonds when they're raised on bruised stone. Root ginger through it winters on their heads as if octumed round their waistbands. That was just like two paragraphs. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of kind of difficult to understand what's going on in that book. Uh, so what this book is like his first books were all kind of just like a stream of consciousness while someone is awake. But this book is supposed to be like a stream of consciousness while someone is half awake, half asleep. So it's like a dreamlike state, and it's supposed to be the effect of reading it if you actually get all of the references because it's actually a it makes references to everything and. It is littered with puns. I think the book is actually supposed to just be puns. There's this uh, one pun at the beginning where it's like a uh, thwart Petrick, which is like four different things at once. It's thou art Peter, like Jesus said, thou art Peter, thou art rock, and on this rock I will build my church. And also thou art Patrick, because it's referring to uh, St. Patrick who went to Ireland. And it's like, fit, like it, it's like the, this book kind of like, and there, there's also like a uh, thwart a Petrick, which means to stop someone from doing that trick, you, you know, like where they have the cups, um, the three cups, and then they have the pee underneath, and then they, there's just a bunch of a bunch of stuff lit. It's just littered with like meaning, like mul on multiple levels, and it's impossible to understand. And not, I don't think anyone has fully understood it ever. But I want to read the whole. I want to read it the whole way through, and hopefully understand at least the basic idea of what's going on when I do it. But you know, when when you start reading it, it's just it's very difficult to even get through a few pages without like just completely getting lost in the language, because he he invents like James Joyce invents words in this like he just combines words where they shouldn't be combined and he often switches into different languages. I guess he had a lot of a lot of understanding of languages, you know, a lot of different languages in his repertoire. But anyways, that's a book that I want to read. A book that I want to read. Is there anything else I can say about it? Not really. I mean, like, I I've read a lot of things about, like, what it's supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about, like, this guy named H.C. E. Earwicker or H.C.E. or something. And he keeps on getting referred to as, like, different people. But they always have the initials H.C.E. And uh, there's, like, 
references to the Bible while also being references to the uh, Irish mythology, like the Tuatha de Danann, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's, there's references to Hamlet that I've caught on. Like I, I used to read, I had to like memorize some stuff from Hamlet. So there's all kinds of references to Shakespeare. There's references to everything in this book. It's a crazy book that's impossible to understand. But I still want to be able to do it. I mean, it seems like a very interesting project, you know? Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say about this. Apparently, I've heard that James Joyce was actually like a an extreme pervert or something like that. And like, uh, uh, there was like a time recently within uh, the last few years when someone got a hold of like his letters that he wrote to women and they were all like ridiculously perverted and weird and he had all kinds of weird fetishes. So... I guess, you know, when you're that smart, you have to be somewhat crazy. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I don't know what else I can say. Uh, I wish I had more time. I, wish, I mean, I wish I had, like, more brain power. I guess I could talk about his other book, Ulysses, which I also haven't read the whole way through. Ulysses is a, a lot more straightforward, but it's, a, you know, it's still kind of confusing. You're just basically going through a guy's thoughts as he's going throughout his day, but, like, he, the thoughts are very interesting. I mean, remember there was a part in Ulysses where he was go into a funeral and he was just thinking all these things like the the worms inside of the the body and like the body getting eaten up eaten up and like the, what the worthlessness of what a body is and like what is a body it, it, once it's dead it's dead and all all these weird thoughts that like an individual would have while l just like watching someone do a funeral and he like he had all these interesting thoughts about like the people around him too and hey eh, interesting book interesting book Nothing else to say. Stream of consciousness. That is a style. Um, I actually wanted to write a, a My Little Pony fan fiction that was kind of inspired by the idea, not necessarily the actual style, but the idea of of James Joyce or of like Finnegan's Wake because uh, I kind of wanted to do it like this. I wanted to have like the story start off kind of normal, but then um, slowly, like over the course of like maybe... 20,000 words it just gets in it just turns into more and more gibberish but like just like one word at a time like in, in a sentence you just see one word that's off so you still kind of understand what that sentence is and then you read another sentence and then it's a little bit a little bit more off and then you keep on going and then eventually like I want it to be so like hard to notice that by the time you get to the in, incomprehensible part it's comprehensible to you and uh, I wanted that to be kind of like a metaphor for like the the author of the book kind of falling into the story and when he falls into the story he he experiences like the sounds of the story and not necessarily the actual words anymore he's just experiencing the sounds so i would spell out the sounds and then like i don't know it was a weird idea and i never did it but i thought it was a cool idea and i can't think of anything else i can't think of anything else to say but i still got two minutes let me see uh i'll tell you how i came to discover this book uh, Finnegan's Wake by James Joyce because that's kind of an interesting story I guess remember that writing teacher I talked about like he introduced me to the book called uh, Medi The Medium is the Massage by Marshall McLuhan well I read through that book constantly and I, I, I there were like, all these references to different little things and one of those references uh, was to Finnegan's Wake I looked up on Google like a phrase that he put in there and found that it was from Finnegan's Wake and then I found out that Finnegan's Wake was this weird book that had all these different theories about it and that it was very complicated and so I think one day I think I just actually found it randomly at the library because I never go to the library but I went to the library one time and I found it randomly or I noticed that it was there and I saw well fitting its way that's cool I'll read this I'll take a look at it I'll, I'll do that and I tried to read it and I understood like about maybe 10 percent of what I read maybe even less I mean it's weird because in Finnegan's Wake there are things that are written kind of clearly sometimes but there's also things that are written kind of uh, very vaguely but you when you when you're reading through it you you end up like catching on to like what's going on oh wait a minute they're talking about this is this is an investigation they're talking about a case they're talking about like the the, the evidence and the suspects and all that or wait a minute this is like a this is a story he's telling he, he's starting to tell a story oh wait a minute he's actually just giving a very long explanation of someone asking what time it is that kind of stuff it's it's crazy it's crazy. It's supposed to be like four or five different things going on, like at the same time uh, that some, like someone's dying and being buried and then being eaten alive. He's also waking up 
and then like cooking eggs for breakfast and uh and then he's also going going to the bathroom at the same time that something else is happening in the story so it's just a crazy 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 book that i would really like to be able to finish but i never know if i i, I don't know i've tried reading through it it's, it's difficult it's actually better if you read it out aloud you know if you read it out aloud because you, you start hearing what the puns are and hearing what the words are supposed to sound like and especially if you read it out aloud like in, a, in an Irish accent that even that makes it even more fun but you know maybe I'll get through it eventually who knows anyways this is the end of the Coquino podcast I hope you had a great time listening if you didn't uh, I don't know give me advice on how to improve I guess see you guys next time <laughs>